you can boost your credit score to the max by taking a few steps. But for most people, it'll take some time and discipline. Reaching a perfect FICO score of 850 might seem like a big challenge, but it's doable with a one-week strategy. Understanding your FICO score, what it means to lenders, and how to make it better is important. Hi, I'm Bev from Finance Homefront, and today we're going to learn how to hit the highest score in 7 days and see how it impacts your money. When you reach the excellent range, you'll likely get the best interest rates saving you a bunch of money in the long haul. Now, let me break down the plan for you. It's a seven day deal and each day it'll be something different. So let's dive in. Let's kick off this plan on Saturday. On that day, grab your credit reports, Equifax, TransUnion and Experian. Head over to annualcreditreport.com. It's the official site backed by federal law for getting your credit reports. And it's totally free. By law, they have to give you one copy each year, but due to COVID, they've been offering more. Generally, you get at least one copy every 12 months. You'll find all three reports on the same website. Once you're there, print out your reports. Take a highlighter and mark everything negative on your credit report. To boost your credit, we need to clean up any negative stuff on it. That's your Saturday task. Starting on Saturday gives you some extra time. Maybe you're off from work. Focus on getting all three credit reports. Now, they might suggest buying your credit score. You can do that, or you can wait until Sunday. On Sunday, get yourself signed up for free credit monitoring. I highly recommend CreditWise. But if you want a bit more info that lenders use, because they look at your FICO score, you might want to check out MyFICO. It gives you what lenders, especially mortgage ones, pay attention to. If you already have credit cards, most major ones will give you a free score every month. Spend your Sunday making sure you have some form of credit monitoring. For instance, you can use CreditWise, which works with TransUnion. They'll give you a TransUnion score and keep an eye on your credit for free. That's all I want you to do on Sunday. For the rest of the week, we'll dive into what factors make up your credit score. How are you finding the insights on unlocking your financial potential with a perfect credit score so far? If you're enjoying the tips and strategies shared, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more valuable content and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things finance. Your engagement and support means a lot for our channel. Now let's step into Monday where we focus on what makes up 35% of your credit score. Payment history. It's essential to pay bills on time to avoid 30-day and 60-day late payments that can seriously impact your credit. Check your credit report for any inaccuracies regarding late payments. If you find discrepancies, dispute them in writing for better chances of resolution. If you face challenges like foreclosures, it takes about two to three years to rebuild your credit. For accurate late payments, if you've caught up on payments, consider requesting a goodwill deletion. In writing, explain your situation to the creditor, asking them to remove the late payment from your credit report. A way to say, I face challenges, but I'm back on track. Can we remove that late payment? Now let's talk about Tuesday. I want to make sure you never ever pay bills late again. Take this day to set up any bills you can on auto pay. A lot of times, it's not that you don't have the money, but maybe you're not super organized or got busy and forgot to pay. With auto pay, you can set up your bills to be paid automatically. For credit cards, you can choose to make the minimum payment, and you can decide how much to pay each month. The key is you won't miss payments because it's all set up. If you're not comfortable with auto pay, then set a specific time twice a month. In the beginning, pay any bills due between the 1st and the 15th. And in the middle of the month, pay any bills due between the 15th and the last day of the month. It ensures you're organized and won't be paying bills late again. After covering payment history on Monday and Tuesday, which accounts for 35% of your score, let's focus on available credit on Wednesday, making up 30%. Determine how much of your available credit you're using. 
If you have a $10,000 limit and used $7,000, you're at 70%. Your goal is to drop below 50%, then 30%, and ideally 10% or lower. Spend Wednesday assessing your usage. Plan how to reduce it and commit to not charging more until you are below 10% or not using credit at all. Now it's Thursday, and we're sticking with the available credit topic. One thing you can do to speed up reaching your goal is to call your credit card companies and ask them to increase your credit limit. This step is an extra boost. Getting each credit card to increase your limit gives you more available credit. Give each credit card company a call and ask if they can up your credit line. For instance, if you have a $5,000 balance, maybe you want to move it to $6,000 or $7,000. Not every credit card will do this, but if they agree, you'll have more available credit. Helping you reach your 50%, 30%, and 10% goals faster. So on Thursday, your task is to see if you can increase your credit limits. Remember, don't actually use that extra credit. It's just to speed up reaching those goals. We've made it to the end of the week, and it's Friday. Today, we're tackling the last three components of your credit score. Let's see what we can do with the remaining 35%. 15% is about the length of your credit history, how long you've been using credit. If you're young, this might be tricky because you won't have a long credit history. One thing you can do is have someone with a longer credit history add you as an authorized user on their account. Make sure it's someone you trust, like a spouse, because if they don't pay their bills, it could affect you. 10% is about credit mix. The types of credit you have. There are two main types. Installment debt, like student loans, car loans, mortgages, and revolving debt, like credit cards. The scoring model likes to see a mix. If you don't have any credit established, you could open a secured card, where you can put your money on the card and build a credit history. Another 10% is about inquiries when you apply for credit or someone checks your credit. Unless there's a mistake, like you didn't apply for a credit or you didn't authorize a credit check, you can dispute it. If they are accurate inquiries, don't worry too much because it's only 10% of your score. Focus on the things you can control. And over time, these inquiries will have less impact on your credit score. And that's the end of this seven day plan. Unlocking your financial potential with the perfect credit score is not just a goal, but a step-by-step -step process that requires commitment and informed decisions. We've explored essential strategies throughout this video, from understanding the significance of payment history to managing available credit wisely. Remember, rebuilding credit is a gradual process, and every positive action contributes to a brighter financial future. A reminder that the information shared in this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. Consult with a qualified financial professional for personalized guidance tailored to your specific situation. What's your biggest takeaway from this video? Or do you have other helpful ideas to share? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more helpful content and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos.